The Johnson & Johnson vaccine remains on pause for now. Dr. Stacy Valender with Stanford Healthcare joins us to talk about that. So we know, do we know any more about a possible link between that vaccine and the rare blood clotting disorder we've been hearing about? At this point, there's not enough information to tell us whether the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is causally linked to the rare blood clots that have been reported in the six women who received uh, the J&J vaccine and had the blood clots. This particular type of blood clot, it's called a cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, is fairly rare in the general population. Uh, the background rate's about 3 to 15 occurring per million uh, people per year. Um, so if you can do the math quickly, that background rate is already higher than the incidents reported with the vaccine. Um, but I think the really good thing about this is the CDC and the FDA have recommended that pause um, in, administering, in administering the vaccine out of an abundance of caution. Um, and to me, this is a good reminder that just because the vaccines are on the market, their surveillance systems do not stop. And so these side effects triggered uh, those alert systems and they did what they had to do, they paused it. Um, but we're gonna be you know, certainly hearing more about you know, whether they'll restart this vaccine um, and in which populations. So if you receive the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, what should you do? Are there any specific symptoms you should be looking out for? Anyone who received a vaccine should do what they always do after starting any new medication or receiving a vaccine. Essentially watch for side effects and report them to your medical provider. So with this rare blood clotting disorder, uh, the side effects usually occur one to three weeks after the vaccine. Uh, that could be a severe headache, vision changes, backache, abdominal pain, shortness of breath, leg swelling, or, or tiny red spots on your skin. Uh, but keep in mind, this condition is rare, very, very rare. Um, you know, right now with the vaccine, it was one in, or I guess six and 6.8 million uh, of the vaccine, of the Johnson & Johnson vaccines that were distributed. Um, so you shouldn't expect to experience any of these, but if you do, you should immediately contact uh, a medical provider. The more common side effects that you're likely to experience is arm pain at the site of injection or flu-like symptoms, and that's a good thing. That's your body working uh, to get that immune response going. So now we've heard about blood clots possibly linked to both Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca. Are there any concerns about blood clotting with Pfizer or Moderna? Uh, Moderna? The Moderna and Pfizer vaccines both use the mRNA technology uh, and the Johnson and & Johnson and AstraZeneca use a different kind of technology, which is that gen genetically modified uh, cold adenovirus vector to uh, deliver part of the coronavirus to help create those spike proteins that your immune system then responds to to create that immunological protection. Uh, both of these types of technology are actually relatively new uh, but the good news is after 100 mil 190 million doses of Moderna and Pfizer, uh, there have been zero reports of blood clotting after the vaccination. Um, so these concerns seem to be more linked with the viral vector vaccines, so that uh, AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson. Um, but again, we can't point to a causal link yet, uh, and we're still waiting to hear from you know the scientific review of, of what's going to happen with those vaccines. Sure. So if you don't feel well after getting a vaccine, which I did not after my second shot, and I wondered about this, is it okay to take the over-the-counter medication or could that affect your immune response? It's a good question. It is okay to take over-the-counter medicines. So there's no concern about diminishing or lowering the immune response if you take ibuprofen or acetaminophen to treat the vaccine side effects, uh, your, your body is going to respond normally. And if you think about it, your, you know, if you get the flu, you would have, uh, you might take, you know, ibuprofen or an over the counter medicine to help control that. But your body is still working behind the scenes to get that immunological response up and running. Um, it's entirely normal and expected to feel a bit under the weather for the first few days. Um, and treating those symptoms will not will not change the way your immune system is working. All right, Dr. Stacy Valender with Stanford Healthcare. Thank you. Thanks so much.